Shotgun Bang, what's up with that thing? What's that thing? The various forms of shotgun shooting sports. Gentlemen, Jim to my right, Mr. Ryan Muckenhern across from us. Uh, Ryan. Marco. I have an admission to make. Please. I haven't participated in formal shotgun shooting sports in like 15 years. That's a shame. Because they're so darn fun. We're going to talk about them today. There's some nuanced differences. Mm. And then I think if we can put it together, we're actually going to go do some participating. I'm going to participate this weekend. You've been going? I haven't. So this year, I actually have not. Um, last year, I got back into the game, but this year, it's been a busy year. Did, um, I, did I miss the invite? No. There wasn't one. There was no invite. Not that you can't come, but Hurtful. I made this decision last night that um, either Saturday or Sunday, I'm going to go try my hand at a little bit of the greatest shotgun sport there is, skeet. Oh, <laughs> Okay, we need to talk about the differences between these things because mm-hmm. uh, hashtag disagree. Oh, okay. Mark, do you have an appropriate shotgun sport shotgun? Of course, I have a 12-gauge autoloader. I don't think that's appropriate. Are you? Oh, Jim, are you pinky up uh, shotgun shaming me right now? Uh, my pinky wasn't up, but I am shotgun shaming you a little That's bit. unlike you. Usually you're like, yeah, just take what you got, and hopefully it's the crappiest, and that's the best. That is true. Those are hurtful words coming from two guys I thought were friends. But <clears throat> anyway, yeah, Skeet we is... Are I'm just saying that was, un- that's a, that was uncharacteristic. Skeet yeah, is, I know, but uh, I just... You being the guy who always wants the nicest, fanciest, flashiest thing and that you utility. got for free. And utility. Except guns. He doesn't do that, and I, it's, I, I know, don't it's understand weird. it. It's weird. And I admire it, though, because it's like... He'll just run what he brung, and... and and sometimes it's frustrating to me because I it's like you could have that. He's like, ah, I don't need it. Yeah. And it's like, damn, he's right. I'm still I'm in pro, I'm in I'm in stronger mental process of getting a, a couple. Yeah, but at the same time, it's rifles. like Mark, you could survive in a Coleman tent. He's like, oh no, that's true. I could, no, I disagree, I could not. dude. Like food, water, shelter, those are important things. You better get the right ones. Hey, your gun is too, Mark. Carrying on. Yeah, uh, Ryan. So let's start, let's so we've got. Let me go through the ones that I know. And then you add any. We've got skeet. We've got trap. We have sporting clays. And five stand, which is a variant of sporting clays. Kind of. Yep. And then what else? V task, helis, and ZZ, which are kind of the same thing. Um, bunker trap, which is a little bit different. Um, yeah, you control your destiny. There's a lot of different things you can do. But, mo- uh, and mo- and mosquito, which we still it. need to make great again. I we think kinda, I, Jim, we yeah. we backed. We were hot and heavy. We did that podcast on mosquito. We got people fired up. I machine. was fired up. We have the machine. We bought machines. You you bought a smoothbore twenty two, mm-hmm. and then uh, Ryan, you got some clays that may or may not work. Will That's work. the hardest part. The clays. The Don't clays work. has been gonna the work. hiccup. They're gonna work. All right. Well, we just gotta try it. Okay. Yeah. You just say when. Okay, let's start. Are we going to really focus on the three main ones? Three main today? ones. Let's, so let's focus on the three main ones yeah. then. Okay. Uh, you love skeet? I love skeet. Let's start with skeet. Okay. Um, so skeet is a is a, a fun, it's almost a hybridization of trap and sporting clays in that you have set stations that you move around. You have a finite number of targets, and that's not, you know, Sporting clays, you have that too. But it's the same target presentations every time. Sporting clays is a high amount of variability. You can get into all kinds of different targets, all kinds of different presentations. It's really up to whoever's putting on that course. But skeet, um, you you have a 180-degree uh, like stand or shooting position. It's almost like a half circle. Half circle is exactly correct. It used to be a full circle, but now it's a half circle. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have two Safety. throwers, what we call high house and low house. And then you have a number of stations in between. And you start at High House Station 1, and you are presented four targets. And this is not international skeet. That's a whole different thing. International skeet's the devil's game. Um, This is, uh, and I only say that because I tried shooting international skeet a couple times. I used to shoot with an Olympic competitor. And, um, yeah, I just can't do it. So (laughs) there's just nothing to it, 
<laughs> right? So uh, if I can't excel at it, then I, I yeah, poop. It was hard, so I quit. It yeah, sucks. Correct. It's insane. Like, my hat is off to those guys and gals that shoot in international skeet and make it look easy because it is wild. Um, but anyway, skeet, you start at station one. Your thrower is above you in the high house. You are presented a single bird over the top. Your second bird comes from the low house, uh, which is in front of you, and it's coming at and slightly quartering away, and then you get a true double. Where did the true double come from? Uh, high and low at the same time. So, oh. uh, yeah, basically, so station one, you're poised and ready. You call your first bird. Bird comes from above you. You're breaking it away, slight quartering off from you. Your second bird comes at you, slight quartering to, boom, break that, and then you call your double, and then it's boom, boom. Like that's very fast paced. So okay, oh, I see how this. So let's go single from the one house, single from the other house, and then Double. two crossing. Yep, and then yeah. you shift position a few yards, and you're presented the same targets in the same sequence, but you're introducing angle. You shift position again, then it's single single. You shift position again. You are then perpendicular to the birds that are throwing. You shift position again. You shift position again, you shift position again, and then you end up in the middle between the two of them. And so you're breaking your high house bird at a few feet, and then you turn, and then you break your low house bird at a few feet. It's exhilarating. What I love about Skeet the most, it's fast paced, it, or it can be, you can, you can take your time, um, but typically if you squad uh, with a group of people, um, it's a, the, the cadence is relatively quick. Because like at all of these... Uh, positions, you yeah. know, so the, the the person, you, the shooter, yeah. are changing the presentation when you move to the next, Correct. you know, station, if you will. Yeah. But you could have several people to your right and left. So everybody's just kind of like rotating through. Yes? Yes, correct. So we all start on one and then we shoot. Everybody finishes station one. We move to station two. Everybody finishes station two. We go to station three. Oh, I figured. Uh, it's not, it's not the. You're not all standing out there at the same time, then. No, the deck is not loaded. It's a it's a sing like one one at a time at each station. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, and what I love about it is you get just about every target presentation, uh, with the exception of a rabbit and then like a, a high chandelle or a springing teal or something like that. So you've got birds that are going away from you, coming at you, and then all angles. Um, major precedence on gun speed. Uh, major precedence on lead, um, whether it's it's maintenance of lead, correct lead, acquiring lead. Um, your focus is definitely put on, on, well, the target, right? You are moving your gun constantly during skeet, uh, and it really, really, really hammers out leads. It's also a relatively short game. So, like, by short, I mean distances. Um, so, some of the challenges with sporting clays and then advanced level trap shooters where they're stepping back on the yardage lines is that's a long target. I mean, you might be breaking a 40, 45 yard bird. Skeet's pretty compact, pretty close. So it, it happens quick. Um, and it really, really helps with, with getting your gun presented, acquiring target, uh, acquiring lead, maintaining lead and breaking the bird all in a, a relatively condensed time frame and field. What is your like ready position? Um, so that depends. So you can pre-mount your gun if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at international skeet, the gun is dismounted. There's a, a band. If you look at the, the skeet shooter's vest, there's a, a color marker or a band on there where the stock has to be presented to. So I shoot dismounted. Um, I think only out of habit. I don't have to shoot dismounted. There's no regulating body that says, oh, you have to shoot dismounted because I don't shoot international skeet. I'm also just shooting skeet for my own personal enjoyment. But... Um, I looked at it as uh, I'm not walking through the woods hunting rough grouse or I'm not sitting in a duck blind with the gun to my shoulder. Um, I wanted to work on form, presentation of arm, acquiring of target, maintaining and sustaining lead, breaking target. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to start dismounted and kind of develop a, a hand or a habit as to how to get my gun from a low ready position or dismounted position to a shoulder position and break the bird. I mean that's I mean that's exactly the way that I look at it. I yeah. mean we've talked about this before. Really anything I do whether it's archery or rifle shooting or whatever like my end game is how do I become a better hunter? Yeah, and that's my personal yeah. that's what I I'm looking to get out of it. Yes, it's fun, but I don't want to practice something how I'm not going to play sure. if you will. So I like uh 
for whatever reason, I was thinking that you kind of had a lot of people started from the mounting posi- mounted position. I was like, well, that's and not... I mean, you, you can. What I've actually found for me personally as a clay shooter is that if I start mounted, um, with the exception of trap, um, I don't know if I get like a little cocky or there's like an anticipatory component to this where... I almost have like this expectation that I'm going to break the bird. And if I'm mounted, I, I, I underthink the physics that are put into it and I end up flubbing the shot. So, and this is like a weird thing. I call it a skull component. Uh, it's something that rolls around in my skull and makes it work better, valid or not. If I start dismounted and I'm surprised by the bird, I'll generally acquire quicker. I don't like install a bad habit or a laziness to the um, presenting of arm and then break my bird back when i was doing a little bit of, bit of this yeah um i was starting dismounted sure and well excuse me i should say i tried it both ways and let me also say i've done very little of this so i'm speaking sure. from minimal experience here but i felt that i actually acqu- i had a like i could acquire the bird easier dismounted because like i would see it better and then pick it up versus when I tried to start like it was just harder for me to start it's probably like, almost at the reddit it's probably and, easier to focus too close too much on the gun when it's up in your face yeah I don't know I don't know I don't know if there's any Prior merit to, to what I just said or not like I, I said I don't I don't I don't necessarily know so when I, this field that I shoot at here it's a really beautiful field um there's some old timers that go up there and these guys are they'll crush more birds in a season than I will in 10 um, they're there like every day. Wow! And uh, one gentleman that I've I've uh, picked up with a couple times, um, he shoots mounted, and if he shoots a twenty four, he's pretty upset. There's twenty five birds on the on the course. If he mm-hmm. shoots a twenty four, he's pretty upset. He shoots mounted the whole time, um, and I think a lot of it is uh, that person. It's, it's almost like a free throw. Like everybody's got their routine when they come up to a free throw. There's a sports reference. Wow! Um, I know it right. Uh, or or like a golf swing. Like everybody's got their own way. They kind of get into the groove. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think. That's a, a big part of it too. With, with international skeet, there is there is like a, a way that you have to do it. Um, so there's that, but that's a different. Well, and I, I mean maybe uh, maybe for him it is just more of a sport. Yeah. Than practice. One thing I'm curious about. I know we haven't really gone into trap and clays a whole lot yet, but is the was the development of these various different types of shotgun sports was it. Uh, was each one designed to maybe try and mimic a different type of real world scenario or was it sort of like in track and field where they started coming up with more events and different types of events because they were like well not everybody is a distance runner and not everybody is a sprinter not everyone is a jumper or a thrower and so you kind of have a little bit of something for everyone like why why the all the different um i think you're i think you're uh correct in that in that each one Someone highlights a discipline or, or a scenario that you would encounter in the field. If we go way back in time, it was live birds. Yeah. Um, so it was chaos. <laughs> and then it went from live birds to clay balls and glass balls filled with soot. Um, and then it went to the clay pigeon that we know today. Um, and they've all taken different forms. And there's been a couple of games that have come in and out of um, the limelight. Some still exist but are pretty obscure. So I talked about uh, American ZZ or Helis which is a really wild game. There's very few clubs in the in the nation that even do this. And um, we got to touch on it because it's neat. And, and I encourage anybody listening to look up American's Easy and how it's shot. And basically there's a clay bird that's set into a propeller that is put on a machine that spins it at a wild rate of speed. And then it releases it. And there's zero predictability to where the bird goes. And the presentation is not unlike trap in that you're standing in a position, the thrower is in front of you, and the bird is to go away. But unlike trap, where you have effectively three angles, left, right, and straight, that bird comes out. It might just fly straight, or it'll take a jog, go left, and then turn right rapidly. It might descend, ascend. You have no idea where the bird's going to go because there's a propeller on it. And it's a very, very, like, intense game i've never had the opportunity to shoot it i've looked for zz clubs or helis clubs uh in the states most of them are in the south um if i find myself in like texas and georgia where i know a couple clubs exist definitely going out of my way to try to shoot american zz because it looks hard as super fun it's a pretty spendy game because of the propeller component i gotta say it sounds like you're shooting a drone every time you 
kind of right <laughs> but when you look at that bird it looks like a quail in flight mm. and so when it when it flushes it goes out changes direction randomly several times on its way out and it's just hmm. wild so what does uh what do you feel skeet gets you more prepared for or or great practice for in the field versus a trap versus clays for me personally uh acquiring target determining and then obtaining and maintaining lead and then um, gun movement and follow through. Right. Okay. So, and it's almost every target presentation you can get, like I said, aside from like a, a vertical presentation of target or a rabbit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then all of it is all gun movement, picking things up. You have birds coming away from you, going at you, and then at all angles. Yeah. And it's, I think it's a wonderful game because it is pretty low impact. It's 25 targets. Um, you don't have to take this long walk. You know, and this is like a thing. What I really love about the clay sports is they're lifetime sports. Like somebody playing football can't play football into their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah. The ski field that I shoot at, there's guys in their 90s that are out there and Mm -hmm. they're still grinding clays. And skeet and trap are very nice because you're fairly static, right? You have a small movement um, that you have to go to the next station. You can be engaged and it doesn't wear you out. It's not tiring. Um, But it is giving you a, a glimpse of most shot opportunities that you'd have in the field as a hunter or a wing shooter. Yeah. Um, and that's why I really like it. And and that condensed format and the precedence on gun movement and speed, uh, I think it made me a better field shooter for sure. Skeet, skeet did. Well, how does trap differ then? Wait, I is was going to say, let's, sure. skeet, let's go to is trap. Is skeet light or what? No, sort of. You don't have 180 degrees. You, you probably have a slice of pie like 45, not even that. It's... For everybody out there who shoots strap, which there's more trap shooters than anybody, it's oh man, it's boring. Um, and so it's, it's not that different. It's a lot different. Okay, let's so proceed. So a regular trap field, um, you have a, a thrower or a trap house in front of you. That trap is going to oscillate um, a certain number of degrees, and it's going to launch a bird at a left angle, a straight, or a right you are going to have a handful of positions that you're going to move to, one through five, so that your presentation is a slight angle relative to straight, uh, slightly less angle, a straight, a slight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then there's a distance component to it, too. So there's a 16, a 17, an 18, a 19, a 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 yard. And you, you're, as you, it depends on how your club does it or how you're shooting it, you might only shoot trap at the 16-yard line. So 16 yards from the thrower, bird is presented. You engage your target. Okay. Um, and it's not an easy game. It's it's certainly very difficult because you have a timing component, you have an angle component, and you don't know the angle because it's constantly oscillating. The, and you just when you it when it goes, it's yeah. whatever angle it was at. Okay. The thrower the thrower is going to move, um, you know, at at a rate, and you don't necessarily know where that thrower is relative to your position and time. Okay, so you got to find it. Yeah, correct. So you do have to pick that bird up. It's a very easy game to, um, I think, overthink and underthink at the same time. You, you have to appreciate it because it, there, it is a challenge. Like it is difficult. Um, but you can also overthink it. That's my problem with trap is I thought I could game trap, and then I'd get in my head, and then I'd shoot just a horrible score. <laughs> um, I'd be I'd be overleading targets and underleading targets in the same thing uh, or in the same round, and it was a very mental game for me. And because I thought, yeah, this is super easy, I'd underthink it, and then I'd start dropping birds, and then I'd start overthinking it. It's like, oh, I bet that bird launches left right now, and then boom, out it comes right. Hmm. Um, and then I have to pick up the slack. Uh, here again, it's still a very, very valid uh, clay game because you are, you know, gun speed's important, lead is important, timing is important. Um, you get way less shot angles, right? Mm. mostly going away from you. So if you're walking and you're flushing pheasants or you're walking and flushing grouse, um, it would be a, a really good way to look at that from like a, how do I apply this to the infield mm. application? Um, like unquestionably the most popular game though, right? It's a super accessible game. Uh, there's a lot of clubs around the country, a lot of scholastic programs around the country. It's the one that has become, like you don't, you don't hear a lot of people say, um, I'm going to go pick up a case of sporting clays loads. You go pick up a case of trap loads. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and I feel as though it's become a little bit, you know how uh, you know how axe throwing really came on scene? Yeah. 
and people do it in bars, I think it's the dumbest thing ever. True. Uh, what a waste <laughs> of time and what just an absolute stupid idea. Anyway, um, it is becoming a little don't, bit... Don't sugarcoat it, Jim. Uh, right, sorry. Uh, it's becoming a little bit like that because I have I have friends that I went to college with or whatever and they're very much like... I mean, they, they're city slickers now, right? Yeah. Like, they not, they never went hunting. They, it never really occurred to them, oh, I'd like to go hunting or go even outside and, like, sniff a flower. But they'll hit me up later on because, oh, I know he, this guy works at Vortex, so he'd be interested in any time I, I, like, come within 100 yards of a gun. Yeah. Um, and then, t- hey, I just went trap shooting, you know? Like, I, mean, like I got invited out by someone I work with or some, you know, whatever thing happened or some event, we all just went out trash. It seems like the thing that everybody just kind of like stumbles into and yeah. does for the experience or something. But I think that's great. And yeah. I'd say maybe unlike the axe throwing, sorry to any professional axe throwers or if you have an axe throwing If you're a business, professional axe thrower, I guess um, that's great. That's but cool. I'm, you're probably awesome. But it's but. not stupid. It's really cool. And, and Jim. Trap shooting. Is, I mean, yeah, so now you've, you've, uh, you've uh, shotgun shamed me. And right. I've, now I feel like you're implying that some people have no business participating in, in the show. Why would sport? I imply that? I don't know. Just that's kind of. I think you're drawing your own implications. You sound like the news. Um, <laughs> so, no, I'm just saying that it seems control, as though. It's, I control the narrative. It seems you though if are you canceled. have. Okay. It seems as though if you have, like, friends who really aren't that into hunting or shooting or anything like that, like. That it's becoming a popular thing for just sort of uh, businesses or people who are trying to hobnob somebody. Where they oh, we'll go out and shoot trap, and that's kind of the thing that you hear a lot of people yeah. like. I never shot guns before, but one time I went out and shot trap. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. And and it is a very accessible game, mm-hmm. right? It's a, there's a very low level of physicality involved. Um, your equipment doesn't have to be spectacular. When I was when I shot on the trap team, um, and then became a coach for that team. One of my best shooters shot the most horrible shotgun on the planet, but he knew how to run it, uh, so that was really important. You don't you don't need a lot of equipment, um, or rather, you don't need a lot of very specialized equipment to go enjoy around a trap. Yeah. Let me ask this question. Yeah. You mentioned less shot angles. Yep. With trap, but to me, in my mind, I'm like, well, there's infinite shot angles because it, the darn thing could go off because it's moving, it's oscillating. At the end of the day, it's still straight right or left. Okay. And I mean, I could make it just same. depends on the, the severity yeah. of the right. Yeah, or the and left. That, that what Jim said is a better way to look at okay. it. Okay, because in skeet, you still get the same shot angles, right? You have you know parallel to perpendicular and varying degrees within. Okay, but the severity of the angle and then the requirement of gun speed, um, you know, acquisition of lead, maintenance of lead, and then execution of shot and follow through is ramped up in skeet because you do have a perpendicular target, and so and then you have two at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you get to do this beautiful pirouette thing where your high house bird comes out and there's a lot of people debate, well, like if you're if you're not, people say like, oh, don't take your high house first, take your low house first, or don't take your low house first, take your high house first. You're going to have a- uh, Do you op- get to pick? You can. I mean, if you're doing this informally, yeah, you, you control your destiny. Okay. Right? So you have two birds perpendicular to you at one time. And sometimes you can time it real cool. And if you've got some- fun choke management, you might be able to break the bird simultaneously with one shot. I wouldn't tell you to go out and attempt to do that because you're probably just going to burn a bunch of shells in futility. But you're going to break a bird while you're moving left to right, and then you're going to pirouette, and you're going to come back and break a bird moving right okay. to left. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times he keeps saying he pirouettes. Yeah, so it's it's fun to think about, like, okay, you've got a bird that you're focused on, your high house, there's your launch, you acquire the bird, you maintain that lead, and then you execute the shot, you follow through requirements, and then you turn directions and you pick up the other bird and you break that. And um, so I love that component of it because mm-hmm. you're, it's just constant motion of the gun. Mm-hmm. And as a shotgunner, like, what kills birds to break targets, it's, it's the ability to move your gun at the correct rate, um, to catch up to a bird that you're behind, to achieve, identify, maintain, and execute that shot through lead, and then the follow through through it, and then picking up that second bird, that's so fun. I want the I that love, is that sounds cool. I, I like love doubles. I, I love doubles. They're just so fun. Managing that transition, yeah, 
that does sound going back to sound. and you can oh, shoot doubles good. trap too so that's a thing so there's there's like regular trap like one bird at a time then there's doubles trap oh okay which is which is really well now cool. I'm back on trap then yeah <laughs> and so doubles trap bees in the trap Jim right so boom you have two birds <laughs> coming out at one time and they're they're going different directions and so now you have a time component you have a gun speed component you have a lead component and then you have a transition component from between bird A to bird B uh, very challenging. Very challenging. And the more distance that you put between you and that target, so you go from the 16-yard to the 20-yard line, you'd think, oh, that's only four yards. That's a lot of distance when we're talking about shotguns. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. talked about that before, looking at, like, choke tube management, shot size, and pattern dispersion over distance. Oh, so, another question. Yeah. Shotgun style recommended, True. commonly used. Are there things that are maybe more traditional or are they actually optimal? Um, and then, or in the same breath, can you use anything though? You too? can use anything. Okay. So I've shot, I've shot sporting clays on league nights with a youth model eight seventy twenty gauge. Okay. Just just to do it right. Um, you see, sub gauges are getting pretty popular. I see a lot of sub gauge use now. I would say if you're looking at like an elite level, a sub gauge being like a twenty twenty eight four ten. Okay. Um, if you look at like elite level or Olympic level shooters or um, like the, your your state trap championship, everybody's shooting 12 gauge. Like right mm -hmm. to see a 20 bore on the line would be unusual. Uh, everybody's shooting 12 gauge, of course. Break action guns are the most popular, um, I would say, mm -hmm. um, and for a couple reasons. One, convention. I won't discredit that. Like when I got my first real clays gun. It was a break action gun, mm -hmm. um, and it had all the accoutrement of a of a clay's gun. You know, thirty two inch barrels, ported. The stock was set up a particular way. I mean, it, everything about it was a competition gun. It was not a field gun. Mm -hmm. um, it was heavy, long, and geared and set up for specifically shooting clays. Um, so there's a bit of a convention there, but there's also some theory behind it. You have a little bit more weight forward with two barrels than you do one, right? So that's a given. Um, that helps with the fluidity of swing. So like a challenge that I have right now is I have a couple of really lightweight field guns. Mm -hmm. They're very difficult to drive. Okay. Because the guns are so light and because they don't have a lot of mm -hmm. mass forward, I have a tendency to rip past targets, over lead targets. Maintaining lead is a little bit more difficult. You have to put a bit more conscious thought into gun speed and movement. Um in order to break that shot. And so these clays guns, if we will, uh, because they're quite weight forward and they've got that extra mass up there, um, a lot of times with a 30 or 32 inch gun or even a 34 inch gun, like there's some 34 inch guns in trap, certainly, um, you've got a longer sight radius uh, to work with when you're looking down that rib. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they're, they're probably a little more conducive for success. They're also like bonkers reliable. So they're, they're, as analog a system as you can get, and they're all analog, there's nothing digital about them, right? But the mechanisms are hyper simplified. There's no reciprocation of an action that's going on. There's no yeah. springs aside from your ejector springs, but this is a this is a very like small function overall in the mm -hmm. in the game. You also don't even need ejectors. So if you had an extractor gun, big deal. You're shooting two birds at a time. That's it. Right. So if you got two barrels, it goes bang bang, cool. Um, usually we see these as more reliable systems and solutions. Um, and I think that there is a, like a form factor, um, advantage to those guns over mm -hmm. say a semi-auto. That being said, when I shot sporting clays, I shot a semi-auto. I, I, so I had a break action on a number of them and I did well with them, but I actually shot my semi, -auto, my semi-auto gun better. And I think for a lot of it, it was fit. Um, the gun fit just ever so slightly better. Um, the recoil impulse I appreciated mm -hmm. more so than I did, um, except for the sub gauges. Sub gauges really didn't have a lot sure. of recoil. So when I shot 20, it was not, that wasn't an imposition. But my recovery time from target A to target B seemed faster when I was shooting a semi auto. And I think a lot of it was fit. And then a lot of it was my own personal convention. I was shooting a semi auto in the field. I thought I should be shooting the exact same gun in a Clay's format gun. Um, so same system, different layout. Uh, this kind of synonymous, so it's like why I talked about Glocks. Like I carry a Glock because I shot a Glock in competition or, right. vi or vice versa. I shot a Glock in competition. Ergo, I carry a Glock. Um, I wanted that muscle memory as well. And I, I ended up becoming very proficient with that gun. It was a semi-auto. You said 
that was in clays? Was there something Sport, about sporting clays? Was there something clays. about sporting clays that that we didn't really talk about sporting? No, clays we should yet. talk about or, sporting clays. What is it about? Oh, well, I thought that, that was sport. just the natural segue. What is it about the look at me? I'm segueing. Picture Jim Didn't rolling see. across the screen in the segue. <laughs> <laughs> we're like Mark. You know what? I feel like we're like segways passing in the night right now. I know what's going on. So what is sporting clays? Uh. Well, yeah. What was it about? You said you had the semi-auto. You felt it did a little bit better in that particular discipline of shotgun sports. Yeah. What, what, what is it, and, and how did that come about? So, sporting clays, um, if you could imagine all the best things about golf and then add a shotgun and aerial targets, that is sporting clays. So, you have uh, a oftentimes very lovely course that you're walking. A lot of times, it's through the woods. Um, it's not a sterile concrete pad field, fixed shooting positions. It's uh, a lot of the clubs that I've shot clays at. A lot of times, there's multiple courses that you go on, and they ascend in difficulty. Um, your targets are coming in very, very realistic, like infield conditions. You're shooting over water features. You're shooting the rabbit target I mentioned. So literally, a clay pigeon that bounces on the ground. It's a very specialized target. It's like heavy duty. And it throws, rolls, bounces on the ground. Like Talk a about ball. one that can be unpredictable. I went, I went a whole season without breaking a single rabbit target because I got it in my head that I couldn't break rabbit targets, and I never, I never broke one. The few Big times mental I've, game. The yeah. few times I've done it, like th- that's what I've enjoyed the most, probably yeah. because it simulated field conditions. Yeah. and you get closest. to be in the woods. And you get to be in the woods. You walk around. You're walking station to station. Um, you know, you've got. At least I don't know what you I called it like you know like a blind target where the targets yeah. were coming from like over a hill towards you like simulating like almost like you know potentially like ducks coming in or something like that. Mm. Yep. Um, yeah, I like that one. What I really love about sporting clays is the target variability and not not just from the presentation of the target, but the actual targets themselves. So mm-hmm. going from say a 120 millimeter or 108 millimeter, uh, a 90 millimeter, a 60 millimeter, a rabbit. Like all of these are different clays that you can encounter and they all do very different things and they all fly a very different way and you have to treat them very differently. When you approach a situation, are you made aware of what's about to happen before you go? Or is it is it like, I don't know what's going to happen. Surprise. Surprise. It's a, it's a rabbit. And then, it, you know, I, sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of the clubs that you're going to go to, um, depending on like how, I don't want to say upscale and make it seem like elite or whatever, but... Uh, I guess how adept that club um, has set that course up, you'll have like a scenario drawn out on oftentimes a little placard or a piece of paper or whatever that's like um, target one is they don't necessarily tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like rabbit and then springing teal right? or rabbit and chandel or rabbit and uh, full cross or et cetera. It's like target one is report pair. So a report pair you call your bird, your bird comes, you break your bird. Upon breaking that bird, the next target is triggered and then comes from another place. Oh, it's coming off the report of Correct. your yeah. shot. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Or you have a following pair. So from we got to back up a little bit. There's some equipment terminology here. You have a thrower, a thrower button. Usually what you see happen is you have either a designated thrower that's at a given station or you as a squad of shooters go out, one gentleman shooting, one gentleman's pulling, and scoring, or one gentleman's pulling, one gentleman scoring. Uh, following pair is you call your bird, your bird is released, and the button is held. The trap resets itself and then launches the other bird in sequence. Hmm. So it's one call for a bird, two birds are released, but in different times. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you have a following pair, your following pair comes out, now you have two birds, you have a true double. Um, yeah. They might not. It, I'm. They might not tell you if it's a rabbit, though. I don't know that I've. Wouldn't ever... that be? I guess. What, what's that like if you're like ready for something to pop up in the sky and then it's skidding along your round? Well, I guess you just you're react. gonna you're gonna look at it and like you'll assess the field. And I've been to clubs that like tell you like it's a crosser and a rabbit. Yeah. That's great. But you'll look at the field and you'll see like chips from the clay pigeon, mm. and you can identify them as, oh, that was an aerial bird, or oh, that was a rabbit. Oh, and then. Um, you know, then you swear when the rabbit comes out. But <laughs> uh, what is often okay to do, some clubs don't allow you to do this, some do, most do, is you approach your shooting stand in sporting plays. Usually it's like, um, think of a small um, enclosed, not enclosed, but like a, like a mini gazebo, if that makes sense. 
You stand up there. I don't think gazebo's right. It's more of an enclosure. Like an outhouse? It's more, uh, Jim, it's more Without of an, a door an on enclosure. It? You yeah. ever see the movie There's Something About Mary? <laughs> like an I, have, I finally saw it after you referenced it so many okay, times. Good. Like an outhouse without uh, a door or a back wall, sometimes a roof. Yeah, okay, um, got <laughs> Right. And it's okay. An to, outhouse you don't want to go in. Right. It's okay to say, can I see a pair or can I see the bird? Oh. And then you'll get a gimme. You see the flight path of the bird, but one. Got and, it. And then go. Got and it. then, and you're in a, gr- generally, Typically. in a group setting. So yeah. everybody gets to sure. see it. And then, and then also you get to watch if you're, you know, number five out of your group or whatever, you get to yeah. see it yeah. four yeah. times yeah, yeah, before yeah. you're up. Yeah. Um, and so why I love sporting clays for a number of different reasons. One, it's the walk. It's it's like there's something enjoyable about Sounds going great. to the woods. Oh, it's wonderful. Two, the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Three, the challenge. I mean, the challenge of sporting clays is undeniable because there's, an, as you mentioned earlier, an infinite amount of variability at a target angle, target presentation, target type, um, and, and, and like your position relative to that target presentation is not static. It is not like there's, it's not like skeet or trap where you stand here, the bird comes there. It's you stand here, the bird could come from here, there, or other places. Mm-hmm. And just such a cool and stimulating environment and targets that are not dissimilar, nearly identical to what you would encounter in the field. Mm. Is it also like golf in that you shoot like dog turd for 17 holes and then somehow on one hole you just like absolutely pull out a Tiger Woods shot out of your butt and it's what keeps you coming back? Very commonly how I shoot. Got it. Yeah. Very commonly how I shoot. That's what I recall as well. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, so it's a very, it's a very fun game. Um, and you, it, you don't get the same target twice on the course, right? That sounds cool. And a lot of a lot of clubs will change. Like the club that I started shooting at, we had an A season, B season, C season. It was broken up into trimesters, um, and then it went more or less um, soft to hard. So by, by soft course, I mean these are usually targets that are very hittable. By the time we get to the hard course, I remember um, one of my one of my coaches and mentors in this. Uh, I doubt Tom listens to podcasts, but if he does, Tommy, this is for you. Um, he set up a target that was a following pair of 60 millimeter birds. So these are, these are small as they get and they travel at a just near light speed velocity. (laughs) And they were like, they were like 50 yards. And so Tom, Tommy, um, so when we were discussing the leads, how do you break this target? We would say it in canoe lengths. (laughs) It's a canoe. It's, It's got a canoe's worth of lead. Two canoes. Two canoes. I like uh, that. And uh, it w- it was actually pretty realistic. Uh, but, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And that's why I love sporting clays. What, like um, what choke is optimal? And is there an advantage to having two different chokes in your over-under? Certainly. Yep. So it depends on the bird, of course, or birds, I should say. Um, I didn't do a lot of stacking of chokes i i did at first when i got my first break action gun that i was shooting with i thought that was the merit oh i can run two chokes so my close bird i can shoot like an ic or light mod Mm -hmm. and my long bird i can shoot a mod or an improved mod yeah what i found out (laughs) is that i was spending an infinite amount of time goofing around with choke tubes and not focusing on how to break the bird okay and so what i did later in life uh, as i got a little bit better at the game is i would i would generally be shooting the same chokes Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. And so I liked um, anywhere between the light mod and improved mod spectrum, um, depending on depending on that course. If it was if I was going to uh, a course that was really tight stuff, of course I'm shooting a more open choke. Mm-hmm. If I was shooting a course that was longer targets, I'm shooting a tighter end of that spectrum. When I shoot skeet, shooting something like a skeet or an IC is a very appropriate thing. We've got pretty close birds. Uh, we've got to worry about you know pattern and trying to catch up to them and break them etc it's it's not uncommon to see a ski choke or an improved cylinder choke for fun when i shot uh a skeet league we would shoot foals so it really like stressed your precedence on okay on the lead and, okay yeah um so yeah we shoot we shoot full mm. um okay interesting uh, not all the time but just for fun i had a follow-up I had a follow-up question. I had a following pair. Uh, uh, what kind of loads do they? Do that's what it was. Sure. Yeah. Is it the same for all of them? Are you switching it up? Uh, so I would say they could be the same. Like you could go out there with your regular like three dram 
ounce, ounce and an eighth load, which is going to be pushing like a seven and a half or an eight shot at between 1200 and, or well, 1150 and 1250, right? That's a, a pretty typical quote unquote trap load. Uh, but there's also specialized loads within that. So you could get, um, you know, a higher velocity, lighter weight load. Um, you could get a heavy load, high velocity load, which is advantageous for long birds. Um, you know, if you've got a, a 40 plus yard bird, you're going to need some speed to get it there and you're going to want some payload to make sure that you have enough projectiles within that loading to break it. You're not exceeding an ounce and an eighth. Um, you're not exceeding probably 1300 feet per second. Okay. Um, there might be some, I, at least with the payload weight, I don't, I don't know that anybody allows you to really do that. Um, the velocity could be a little bit variable. Um, a lot of trap shooters are running a pretty high test load um, because there's a distance component to trap. Skeet, you can kind of get away with anything um, because the targets are pretty close. Okay. I mean, if you wanted to shoot a 7-ace ounce load or a 1-ounce load, you're not at a distinct disadvantage okay. doing it. International Skeet has a regulation, and I'm certain that the, the – high echelons of trap and sporting clays also do have a regulation on that as well. Um, but you know, that's in 12 gauge in 20 gauge, 28 gauge, 16 gauge, 410. It's you're, you're going to be a little bit more variable mm -hmm. just because of the, the loading offerings in those there's, there's a standard, but it's a less identified standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you, what, if I just walked into the store and I was like, I want to get trap loads. What's it? What, what box am I going to get? Uh, you're probably going to see something like federal's top gun, um, clay and field, from yep. Winchester, Winchester Super Target, Winchester Double A's, Remington Nitro 27's, Field mm -hmm. Key, Crushers. Um, we used to call them Rhino Rollers. Um, they're all going to be geared toward okay. that kind of thing. But you're looking at like an ounce and an eighth, mm -hmm. seven and a half or eight shot at between 1,145 feet per second and 1,250 feet per second, give or take. Got it. We often identify these as what are called low brass loads. So mm -hmm. like the metal component of the shotgun shell hole is very low. Hmm. You know what? Um, not stout recoil either. Typically not. No. So because for a person not, wanting yeah. to just yeah. kind of get into shooting and yep. doesn't want to beat themselves up, this is um, a fun option as well. Correct. And um, the idea behind them is high volume. So a uh, very typical sporting clays course is fifty birds. That's a lot of consecutive shots. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and a lot of guys will shoot a sporting clays course two, three, four times in a day. It wasn't atypical at the club that I started at where you'd get two rounds in, minimum. Like, if you went out there and shot a single round, it's because you had somewhere you had to be. Um, but two rounds minimum. And you could usually get four would be about the maximum mm. before we'd run out of light. Yeah, there's no way I'm shooting turkey loads like no, 50 times no, no. Second, four no. times in a day. No, you're shooting some three and a halfers <laughs> just going shooting, for it. Shooting low base stuff. I do like, and I'll go back and I'll reiterate this, Mark, because you're fake news. I feel like I'm going to get mislabeled. But I do like the fact that the, these shotgun sports are very good at introducing people to firearms, mm -hmm. oh, I think. Yes. I think that they've introduced probably more people to firearms than than... I mean, they've introduced more people to firearms almost than like the latest, you know, AR-15 pistol buying craze yep. and all that. Just over time, if you add it all up, yeah. And tons of people I know, like like I mentioned in my story, that you know, they're like, "Oh, hey, like we went out and shot shotguns. That was fun. I'm looking at getting a shotgun now." And then you know what's going to happen is they're going to get a shotgun. They're going to be like, "Yep." Well, now I have a gun in the house. Nobody's dead yet, and uh, <laughs> I think I'd like to get another gun. And then they go out and get the AR, the bolt gun, or something like that, and it's great. I would also argue that shotgun sports, on the whole, will make you a better shooter in all the other disciplines. I hmm. can see why. Oh, I like that, too. And that's a stretch of a statement, but this is coming from being a shotgun shooter first and then getting into, like, action pistol, action rifle. Mm. So both of those disciplines, or all three of those disciplines, are fairly dynamic. So there's a lot of movement, manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but... Timing is a, a very important thing um, in shooting in general, right? So, like, even being on a very flat and static rifle range, timing and, and how you're executing the shot from the moment that you consciously say pull the trigger to the time you do it, follow through, all of that, you're, like, heavily exercised with shotgun sports. Mm. Um, for me, as a, as a, going from being a clay shooter to an action shooter, target acquisition, transition, and movement were the biggest things that I picked up out of it. Um, and then just repetition, trigger mm -hmm. pulling, repetition, repetition, repetition. I was shooting pretty much at minimum four nights a week 
when I was shooting Clay's games. Sporting Clay's Monday's Trap, Tuesday, Skeet, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then oftentimes we'd pick up a weekend match somewhere in one of the disciplines except for Trap. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you get a lot of repetition out of it. You get to hear the thing go bang a lot. Yeah. And you get to learn how to hold it. You get to learn how to recover from recoil. You get to learn how to manage recoil mm-hmm. um, and then reacquire. And and I, I think that was such a, a beneficial and influential thing that I did to round myself out as a shooter. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all. The little that I've done it, I mean, the probably the biggest thing I remember is that it was just fun. Like, I look back, it's almost like, um, I don't waterfowl that much, I've said this before too, but my lord, it is fun. And, I mean, one thing that I, at least, okay, it might have been the guys that I was shooting with too, and just the atmosphere of where we were shooting, um, you didn't have to take it that serious. And so it was, no. I mean, like you, your analogy of axe throwing, you could take it, not the safety component, but you could take it that serious. Like, oh, I'm going out with the boys. Oh, we're yeah. Gonna, we're going to shoot a little bit. We're going to break some clays. We're going to joke around, tell some stories, give each other some guff perhaps. Oh, yeah. And, that, uh, you know, yeah. That's yeah. that's why sporting clays is especially fun because it's, um, it's exactly that thing. And when I shot a lot of sporting clays, um, my hunting partner and our buddy Lance. Lance was very serious. <laughs> Lance, Lance is the... It's so like one of the most serious guys I know. You guys, you didn't take advantage is, of that, that, did you? You couldn't. That no. is extremely golf-like. There, there was, um, there was an expectation that we shot very um, loosey goosey, and then Lance, no goofing around. Oh, I didn't know if you would uh, yeah. almost kind of like you know poke the bear. A no, little no, no, bit. no, 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 no. Not worth. I mean, it. Lance did have a gun. Uh, no, it's not that. It's just he was he was very serious about it, and he's very good at it. Well, and so you, you don't want to ruin like no. if that's how he's treating the experience. Yeah. You don't want to ruin it for him. And what's really cool about a lot of this too is, is aside, I from, didn't take it that serious. <laughs> um, it's a it's a very much an individual competition. At least it was for me anyway. Mm-hmm. So when I was when I was introduced to sporting clays, the first round I ever shot was a thirty eight. I was like, is that good? And they're like. No, you should be breaking fours, and then then we're talking, and then immediately at that point forward, it was, it's not who I'm shooting against, and I'm not trying to benchmark against that person. No, later it kind of became that, mm-hmm. but but for me it was like I have an expectation that I get to here, and then my goal was like a, a 42 average, and then a 44 average, and then. Uh, I've never run a sporting clays course. I've never shot a 50 straight. I've shot a 49 and a lot of 48s, but I've never run a course. I've also never run a course on skeet. I've broken every target on the skeet course, never in sequence, and it irks me to no end. And I about guarantee I know which target I drop, and because I say that out loud, I end up dropping that target. So it's just a self-fulfilling uh, competition situation that I've got going on. Um and and that's also what I love about it. You can have a ton of fun, but you're really competing against yourself. Yeah, I mean yeah. that that's what I remember yeah. as well. And and uh and I did see that too. Yeah. You're like, oh, I got better this week. Yep. And you generally would. Yeah. And that's it's just getting those reps in yep. and shooting a little bit more. That's, and individual sports are great that way. Yeah. yeah. You go to the YMCA or whatever it is that you go to, and you try and play a pickup game of basketball. And if you suck, you're slowing everyone else down on your team and all that. And, and then you just kind of like, well, what what's the point? You know. But you do an individual sport, and it's like if you do terrible. Nobody else cares. Yeah, you learn, and then you do better next week. All right. But it's a great opportunity to smoke cigars, uh, which I think any, any opportunity to smoke cigars is a good opportunity. Um, no drinking on the field. Um, snacks are okay. We did after. Sure. Yep, not uncommon. Yeah. Uh, not uncommon. <laughs> but <laughs> <it's>, clarification <laughs> was needed. <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, for the most part, especially sporting clays, it's a very relaxed yeah. Fun. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no uniform necessarily, so that's where it delineates from golf. You don't have to look a certain way to do it. Um, the the more, um, I guess, I'm not going to say eclectic, but the more disadvantaged you are with the firearm of choice. So, like, for instance, as somebody who stands 6'4", shooting a youth model Remington 870 and 20 gauge, you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, that kind of thing is encouraged as long as the gun is safe and functional. Uh, you know, why not? So you can you can control your own destiny and have a have a hoot with it. So neat. Yeah. Well, I'm pumped to get out. Yeah, 
Let's do it. That was a good 10 minutes. Yeah. Like that. We, yeah. You know how we used to start these with, we've got 10 minutes to. Mm-hmm. And then it turned really to 10-ish. No, and, yeah, and then it just and then turned like, into just whatever. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, we saw what happened here. They turned off the shot clock on us again. Oh, yeah. We went dark a long time It only ago. goes for a certain amount of time that the program <laughs> fails. So. Uh, cool, guys. Go well, shoot some clays, man. That was fun. Yeah. Shooting clays is fun. There's a lot of clay ranges around, too, which I think is really good. Yeah. Hard to find a uh, rifle range that you can just show up at. Yeah. Less and less and less these days. A, a clays range, um, most of these things open to come in, buy a round, buy a punch card. Support your local clays range, too, by the way, mm-hmm. um, and keep the sport alive. A lot of these memberships are, are not that much, and they, they come with a benefit like the the. Uh, club that I'm a member of here locally, I save, I think about a buck a round or a buck fifty a round, which is not insignificant. If you're going to shoot a hundred rounds a year, that adds up. Um, and it, you know, great place to meet people, have fun. Awesome, cool. All right, thanks everybody for listening to this ten minute uh, super ish talk. Uh, yeah, hopefully we got you fired up to break some clays. A super ten minute matic <laughs> 76. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye.